Yo, what is going on, guys? My name is Jason K. Miles Marks K. King Marks are back into the video, and uh, yeah, Spirit Screen review for IGN for near uh, replicant. Now, this game dropped today, actually, and uh, I want to see what IGN had to say about this. I'm gonna, I was gonna get this game regardless, but I don't know. I saw a lot, I saw a lot of people kind of upset from IGN. I thought the review was kind of ridiculous. So we're gonna check it out. Oh, um, so. So the title's actually called. Yo, tell me how for. When I was looking at Near Replicant and it said a version, I thought people were just ty had like typos and mess. This John is actually called Near Replicant version 12247448448. Seven one three nine. Like, what? Why is it so long? I don't get. Somebody could. Somebody please tell me that in the comments. Why is the comment? I mean, the title is so long, bro. Like, what sense does that even make? I, I honestly don't know. But anyway, we got so a lot. We got some videos uh, we want to check out today. Uh. I was going to look at this Mass Effect video. Um, this is probably going to be my last upload for our EDP. I was going to, I was going to upload that. And. Though actually it's not. It's about EDP and a guy Alex. Because apparently this guy Alex is a scumbag. So he's a freaking racist guy too. Not racist. But well, not, EDP was never racist. He was just a freaking weirdo. But. Uh, this guy, Alex, he's a freaking, um, he's a racist from what I heard. So, uh, we gotta look at that verse uno. Yeah, we're gonna react to that after this video right here. They're gonna react to, uh, the mess. So, we got three videos coming out today. This video right here, and uh, the last EDP. This is my last video for EDP. And... Uh, Mass Effect. So, yeah. We'll see what happens with this. Uh, hope you guys do enjoy. And uh, let's see what we got, man. I see this review, IGN. What you got for me? It's you, isn't it? Honestly, I mean, I I no, haven't played uh, this right. version of Nier. I never played this. I, I played Nier Automata, one of the greatest games I've ever played. Great game for sure. Uh, Should have won the by the way. So my experience going into Nier replicate now, version. 1.224 Actually, no, I have played this. I only got beat. I think, yeah, I think I did play one. this. And you know, I find myself rather thankful for that because if there's one thing you need to know before going into this new version of Cre genre bending action RPG, it's that you can expect to revisit the same places, fighting the same enemies, and pushing. Now, I was looking at gameplay. I know a version of this game was actually on PS3. But, uh, but it's a remaster. You can definitely tell that the there's still PS3 like uh, when you the size to this game. This is great. This is great. I'm so sorry. Guys, I'm tired. <laughs> the game was great, don't get me wrong, but you could definitely tell, like, yo, this John still looks like a PS3 type game. Version 1.22 is in a strange place of being more than just a remaster, but also less than a remake. It obviously looks much better when compared to the muddy original, with dramatically improved draw distances, cleaner textures, better character models, and yeah, yeah, a consistently yeah, sure. smooth 60 FPS. But at frame. certain points, at the same you time, though, it still gives off that PS3 360 era. That's what I'm. That's what I was trying. That's what I was trying to say. That lack detail, stiff NPCs, and segmented areas. It certainly isn't an ugly game by any standard. But it also right. looks great. But it doesn't. Yeah, it looks Nier nothing Automata. like Nier Automata. That said, every character is not. Nears otherwise sleepy world to life. The chickens in this village like to lay their eggs in high places for some reason. Nears combat has also seen some love, smoothing out its animations and making it feel extremely comparable to Nier Automata's. One of the big things that was taken from Automata is the seamless integration of weapon combat with your skills. Where in the I don't know, I heard, I heard. still to charge spells. Now you can I don't know, I don't know if I'll be a fan of the whole repetitive uh, gameplay though. Dynamic. That said, it's still pretty shallow and easy. You never get uh, so it's not really skills, like detailed fighting and everything. I'm going to fight in the mechanics of the game. Come to your button attacks, 
and I was always swimming in health restoratives, which took almost all tension out of every fight. Eventually, the challenge became more about finding the right combination of magic and sword combat. Now, the story for Nier is really great. Being a test of whether the gameplay may look kind of lag a little bit, but the story the itself for Nier is, and fun is freaking at, amazing. But it did get pretty stale by the time I finished my 35-hour playthrough. And yes, there is a hard mode, but it turns enemies into sword sponges. Oh, I'll, I don't like that. Probably, probably will be playing on hard mode. On the plus side, there are three different weapon classes, weapon styles, and move lists. There's a caveat to enjoying all of them, though, in that upgrading the weapons within those classes is very expensive and requires a lot of grinding. Unless you want to spend even more hours in the junk heap fighting robots, you're encouraged to pick one and stick with it. There's also a small Ooh. element of playstyle customization in the form of upgrades called words that you collect as you level up and defeat enemies. These words can be added to weapons, spells, and your defensive techniques to add special properties to them, such as added strength, guard break, magic power, and so on. While being able to tailor your character by swapping words in and out is a welcome feature, I never felt any sort of need to customize my weapons or abilities in any sort of way other than equipping just whatever words gave me the most damage on whatever I had equipped. Because mm. the combat scenarios never challenged me in any ways that required me to do so. Fortunately, it's at least very easy to equip your strongest words on all your weapons or spells. What saves it from becoming outright dull are the ways in which Near Replicant throws you into its combat encounters. Okay, okay. Wildly. It masterfully plays with camera angles and perspective shifts in some truly inspired ways. And those I mean, it looks great. Don't get me wrong. The game definitely looks really good. Repetition. That was dope. I like that. Their story starts slow, but ultimately becomes the absolute best part. It takes place in a post-apocalyptic fantasy world in which a teenager named Nier, or whatever you chose to name him, sets out to find a cure for his sister, Yona, who's afflicted with a terminal illness. It's mm. a deeply personal story, one about a brother's love for his sister, much more so than any sort of grander ambitions to save the world, which is one of the more intriguing aspects of it as an RPG. Nier and his companions are not chosen heroes of light or anything of the sort, and the actions that they take very often fall into a morally gray territory, and sometimes okay. they push the needle somewhere even darker. It's a credit to the strength of Nier Replicant's writing and performance of the cast that regardless of how dark or grim things get its characters are always a joy to be around the snooty sentient floating book grimoire vice is endlessly entertaining with his condescending commentary on whatever's happening mm. <laughs> i am grimoire vice yeah the voice My acting in this game is also really good too i love the voice acting in here kaine is just <sighs> an absolute badass and his hilarious that's an, I, I, I guess i don't I like i just like wearing a hat man he's just sitting there looking all fire i just like wearing a bucket hat so. walk over to you cram my hand inside your goddamn bitch ass chest and pull out your fucking and Emil is just the purest and most kind-hearted floating skeleton with a creepy head you'll ever see. I'd be remiss to leave out the hauntingly beautiful soundtrack, which is just an absolute joy to listen to. Yes, Whether it it's sounds catchy, freaking amazing, bro. World theme. Oh man, that sounds so fire, bro. Or the grand operatic boss tracks. It's just all phenomenal. Yes. I remember when I first played Nier Automated, bro, I quote, the soundtrack is so like most freaking RPGs, amazing, Nier Replicant bro. Is made up of I can't wait to play this game, too. So I just want to see what I, I just want to... Listen, regardless how you feel about IGN, I think we can all agree we, we, you know, you we, like we're going to watch the reviews regardless, it's just because they're there. Like uh, it's just I mean, natural, it's a habit, man. Earths, you just gotta do it, you gotta watch it. It's just important, you have to watch it. If I just want to review a popular game... Ten bags of wheat and, and ten sardines. You know, know we have to watch that. Do we have any medicine? I know. Could you give me like five pieces of mutton and three pieces of meat? We all know we're gonna meat. come back to Ten bundles of wool, five lumps of natural rubber, and ten goat hides. It's made worse by the fact that there's no way to set a side quest as your active quest, which means that there are no waypoints on the map. This is an area that absolutely feels like it should have been addressed as a quality of life improvement for version 1.22, but no dice. The fact that they're super unrewarding and not worth the effort actually ends up being a net positive because it means you can just ignore them and go pretty much the entire game without letting them distract you from the main quest line. 
One of the boldest decisions with regards to Nier Replicant is the fact that, as Yoko Taro games tend to, it demands to be played more than once. If you just did one playthrough from start to credits, you'd be missing out on literally half the story. This may sound like a drag, and to an extent, it kind of is. But it's necessary <laughs> yeah, I mean, to tell yeah, this story right. in a way that can only be told you, through Real video. gamers do that, though. It's a sacrifice real gamers that's worth don't play. Besides, it's not as bad as it There's sounds. some games I actually because played through, like, once, once, and then I played again. Like, Red Dead Redemption 2. I played Red Dead 2, like, act. once. So you're not actually playing through the whole thing again. Just the latter and better half of it. The second playthrough of Near Replicant is actually the best one, because even though you get all the same events as the first playthrough, albeit with the truly different bits of additional dialogue, you're going through those same events with the knowledge of what happens at the end, which totally recontextualizes everything in the second half of the story, and leads to some truly incredible moments that hit me harder emotionally than a video game has in some time. The third playthrough, which you must do in order to see the final three endings, is where things get a little out of hand. It's nearly Damn. identical to the second one, and you must find all the weapons before you challenge the final boss. That's a good, I don't know, that's a little bit too much. That is a little bit too much. I don't see anybody, I don't know. That's a good one for YouTube, and yeah, but on your own time, I don't see anybody doing and that. I feel like once they beat it, that's all right. GG's. I don't see, unless you're trying to do it for YouTube, trying to, spoilers, get, like, you know, trying to say, get that true ending for YouTube, that's understandable. And yes, it is truly special. Dog, I don't know. Alright, it's the verdict. Verdict, guys. As a version up of the original Nier, Replicant version 1.22 does a respectable I'm job so of updating the graphics again. and the combat of the 2010 cult classic to a more modern standard by dramatically improving its environments, animations, and performance, while also going the extra mile and adding excellent voice acting to every single character in its world. It definitely shows its age in its combat and quest design, however. And while the improvements to combat certainly help smooth things out, it still suffers from repetitive enemies, mundane side quests, and a lack of evolution over the course of the 35 to 40 hour adventure you'll need to complete just to see all the endings. I know that sounds bad, but just push through it and you'll get to see what's truly excellent about Near Replicant, its story and characters, both of which are still among the strongest I've ever seen in the genre. For more Near Replicant version 1.22, check out the first minutes of the game. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN. Yeah, all right. And eight. A lot of people look at eight as freaking sixes and fives these days. I really don't understand that. Eight is a freaking eight out of ten. That's a freaking great score. Um, yeah, I'm, I was gonna get this game regardless. I just want to see what IGN has to say about it. I always check in by IGN. I never. It's actually my second time doing reaction videos to IGN doing reviewing something. Um, you guys really love the Demon Slayer one, so I forgot. Hey, why not do here? Um, anyway guys, this is for today, uh, for this video, I got two more videos coming out, I know Geek Guk, Guk uploaded a video, here's my alarm clock for tomorrow, oh my gosh, um, Geek Guk uploaded a new video, uh, let's see, fuck, I did not mute it, uh, so Spring Anime 21, yeah, I gotta watch this, cause I am, I don't know what's popping right now, but what's popping right now for anime guys? Just you guys in Attack on Titan, um, what My Hero, bro? I don't know. I'm not. I don't know, bro. I don't know if I'm gonna react to My Hero this year. I know we. I know I've been reacting to My Hero consistently. So I think, cause I did. I think I bodied season three. Season three, I think I I buy. I was I was consistent with season three. Then season four, I, I think I only react to like what two episodes. And uh, season, f I don't know. I don't know if I want to react to season five, man. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Season 3 is by far my favorite season of My Hero Academia. I love Season 3 so much. Um, I feel like Season 3 was the best. Like, that was the most hype. What else? Like, one piece. I, I gotta check to see, man. I gotta check to see what's hot. So, I might, I might actually replace Mass Effect for Geek Guck. Let's see. My man's gonna let's see what he got going on with that. Because I really want to see what he has to say. I'll probably react to Mass Effect tomorrow. I'll be tomorrow's video, right? So I want to see what Geek Guck has to say about Spring because I, I really want to know what's popping. I don't see what I'm missing out on. Um, so yeah, guys. Uh, that'll be the next video. Keep uh, keep a lookout. That's coming out really soon. Bye, Z.